Now, for the last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about together, talking about what it means to be a part of a, of a family of believers. We, we're used to family, but this is a family of believers, a family of followers of Jesus the Christ. And God created us to live in the context of other believers. He didn't create us, we said last week, to just gather up uh, as a bunch of individuals who don't interact with one another, but we, we are together as a community of faith. And so when we get together, we, we, we're better at this. The Christian life is designed by God that we would worship together, we would serve together, we would grow together. We would make the good news of Jesus known in this world, impacting this world for Christ. And we do it together. And when we do it together, there's power in together. The church is a family. And this is a part of this thing that uh, we don't focus on nearly enough probably. But your, your spiritual family is going to last a lot longer than your earthly family. Because your spiritual family goes right on with you into eternity. And so what we want to do is we want to do church family well. This morning, I want to talk about a family event and very much uh, the Passover celebration in Judaism is a family event. It's a together event. And Jesus took that event and he turned it in a beautiful way for us, the church. So we begin in Luke chapter 22, verse 14, where... As Luke tells the story, when the hour came, he, he's referring to Jesus, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. Then he said to them, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Again, he has been pointing them for weeks now that he is going to be arrested, tried, he's going to be beaten and crucified, and on the third day he will rise again. And it's so it's so outlandish for them to even try to imagine. They keep saying, I wonder what he's talking about. What in the world is that supposed to mean? How do, how do we process something so uh, out there? He tells them again, before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again, the Passover meal. I will not, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it uh, to them and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Now, the Passover was a time filled with symbol and meaning. Some of you have been to a Passover Seder at some point, maybe, and walk through the different elements of the meal and the different symbols of the meal and all that it represents and, and all the beauty of uh, that observance. This was a time the disciples... They'd all been doing this their whole lives. This was core to their culture, core to their faith. This is who they were. They, th this was a family tradition. So the Passover has a lot of the same things as a Thanksgiving meal does for many of us. We get, it's a family thing. We gather up. We share it together, except the spiritual side of it is elevated much more than most uh, Thanksgiving gatherings. It's elevated to the highest heights because they're focused on the great deliverance God brought to them in leading the Israelites out of slavery. Well, it was common that Passover would be a family event, but now as Jesus walks in the shadow of the cross, he stepped, multitudes have gathered around him, the crowds always there, his opponents always challenging him in the midst of the crowd. But this time, he's pulled away from all the crowds and all the people, and he's just with his closest followers. He's not with everybody. He's with, uh, with those that 
have been with him every day, who've walked with him up and down the dusty trails of Galilee and Judea, sailed with him on the, on the Sea of Galilee. This is who he is now spending his intense time with, giving them what they're going to need for the time just ahead and for the time that is beyond the cross and the resurrection. He reserved this for his closest followers. This morning, we gather as the followers of Jesus Christ in this place, and we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. Jesus instructed his followers to observe this. He said, as often as you do this, remember me. There's not an instruction about how often it would be, but as often as you do this, Jesus said, remember me. Make it, a, make it most about me. And those first disciples, they sat with Jesus and they shared a meal and they shared a teaching time. And in a real way, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, one of the things I want to remind you of is that we, we also sit before the Word of God, but we also we, we come to the table with Jesus and we do this with Jesus. We share this time as a part of Jesus' family. And it is a privilege to do this and we should never ever take it lightly thoughtlessly it's a sacred responsibility that's why the bible calls us in the clearest of ways to and we'll read the passage in a moment to examine our hearts we need to be prepared for this this isn't and that this is one of the reasons why we don't tack this on just to the end of a service like okay it's a service about whatever and then we're going to tack uh, a communion, a Lord's Supper, onto the end of it as just a, a random appendage. But we're going to sing about what Jesus has done for us. And we're going to pray about it. We're going to read scriptures about it. We're going to talk about the cross. We want it to be much about Jesus and much about this time and when we do this together. I enjoy sharing a meal with family and close friends and the Lord's Supper is a time to be shared together as believers, not just me by myself, but it's, it's a together experience. And we want to do this today and talk about the things we share in a time like this. And it's all the things that Jesus and his disciples shared on that night before the cross. Now, here's what I want you to do, and don't take too long to do this right now, but I, I need everybody here to identify one or at most two other people that you're going to, uh, they're going to be your buddies just now, okay? Going forward, you need, so if you're not, some of you may, may be here, you may be here by yourself, don't leave anybody by themselves, and I don't need 20 of you in a group together because all my math is just going to go really bad. So pair up two is great three at the most but take just a moment and just make sure everybody has somebody okay ready set go if you don't know somebody next to you introduce yourself make a friend Everybody have at least a somebody? Okay, good. When we get started, you still find somebody that uh, needs a partner, bring them into your group. Okay, now we're going to do some togethering today. What do we do when we celebrate the Lord's Supper? Well, one of the things we do is we share joys together. The Passover was a celebration of God delivering the, his chosen people, the Israelites, delivering them from slavery in the most miraculous of ways, in a way they could not have ever accomplished, ever constructed, ever organized for themselves. He delivered them from bondage. And the Lord's Supper was a teaching that Jesus brought out of the, out of the Passover celebration to show 
as wonderful as that great historic event, the greatest redemptive event in the Old Testament, the, the, the exodus and how they came out of, out of slavery, the greatest redemptive event there, he, he, he used that to say, but there's a greater freedom to be found than even freedom from slavery in a faraway land. But it's, it's the freedom that is ours to be free from the, the power, the penalty, the curse of sin in our lives to be set free to be forgiven to have a living relationship to a living God to know eternity is secure in heaven to be set free to that and that's that's what we talk about when we celebrate the Lord's Supper there is joy in forgiveness of sin because of Jesus there is joy in living in a relationship with him because of what he has done for us. There is joy in seeking to fulfill the purposes he has created in his teaching of what life should be about and how we should go about this journey of faith. The joy in relationship too to one another because we, we do the one another's together, the encouraging and praying, uh, caring for one another. The Christian life is designed by God to be a life of joy and I would like for you now here's the deal about the sharing I'm going to invite you in just a moment to share this is one of my greatest joys in life that I know is from God now I'm going to give you two minutes that's why I have my stopwatch now you can't say with your, your buddy in two minutes it all started in the long hot summer of 1974 I was one of two children growing up down a gravel road outside of Victoria Texas uh, you know it, it can't be that this isn't a romance novel it's a story so you got to get good at short stories and so tell a story. This is, I think, one of my greatest joys in life. Go. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> That's your official signal there. All right. Hey, thanks for, thanks for doing that. One of the things about sharing joys is that it always just picks me up a little bit to hear someone else's good joy story. And no matter what I'm going through, when I hear God's at work in a lot of other people's lives, and uh, we, we draw from one another, incur the, the encouragement of just sharing story is so powerful. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we, we talk about our gospel conversations, encouraging you to go to the website, record. I had a gospel conversation this week because a lot of our gospel conversations it's an encouragement to someone else to know there is hope. There, there is there's an opportunity to be free in Christ. Uh, this is sharing your own testimony, not just sharing maybe a, the three circles or the Roman road or the four spiritual laws or whatever you, you use to share. This is how you give your life to Christ, but tell the story. This is my story of when I was far from God and how I came to know my need for a Savior because of my sin and I... I surrendered my life to Jesus. I asked him to forgive my sin and I turned from my sin and I turned my life to him. And now because of what he did, dying on the cross, being raised from the dead, I am free. And the same can be true for you. There's a lot of good joy stories and we learn and we grow together so we share our good joy stories. Now, second thing. We share burdens. Jesus at this point, by the time we get to Luke 22, he is living every moment in the shadow of the cross. He knows it's just hours away. And he knows not only the suffering that is before him physically, but the greater suffering of carrying the sins of the whole world for all time. And because he was the sinless son of God, he's the only one qualified to do it. But what a horrible, horrible burden for him to have to bear. And yet... Because of his obedience to the Father, because of his love for us, he did just that. But in this time with his disciples, 
He shared this burden with them. He wanted them to know there's some hard things coming, and I need you later on in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's going to ask them, pray for me. Jesus asked them, those guys, to pray for him. Today, we uh, gather up, and some of you came walking in here with just all kinds of burden. You're carrying heavy things. and We really can walk in and, hey, how you doing? How's it going? I was with a group of pastors this week, uh, retreat, and they're all, we, we got down to the praying for one another part, uh, and we'd already shared a lot, but when we got down to the praying for each other, these are guys who are leading big ministries, carrying forward the gospel in their communities to the ends of the earth and uh, love the Lord, love their families, but to a person, everybody had something big in their family that they were, they put on their face and good morning and welcome to church and they all are doing it right now. But they all had tremendous burdens that they were carrying and great difficulties they were facing and problems and stresses that weren't, weren't just work related it was it was extended family and a lot of other things and you came in the same way today you all dressed up for church and you put on your smiley face and you can do it and you can you can say hey, it's all good but we know we have uh, burdens that we carry and when we come together, one of the things that we need to do is we need to share our burdens. That's why we need to get down to that group level. That's why we encourage you. Last week, you need to be a part of a, of a group here on campus, one of our Bible fellowship groups, a Sunday school class, because some of you are really carrying heavy, heavy things. And I'm, and I'm so glad I can turn my burdens and my troubles over to the Lord, but I'm so glad I, with the kids, I do not have to carry this by myself. And that I have some wonderful people. This church has so blessed me and my family because we don't carry it by ourselves. Whatever we have faced through life, and we all face things in life, uh, a church family that will encourage you and pray for you and minister to meet your needs is a precious, precious thing. Maybe uh, just now, in the next, oh, I don't know, two or three minutes, why don't you... Uh, why don't you turn to folks there that you're uh, partnered up with and just say, this is, this is the, the burden that I came in carrying. And then I'm going to ask you to do something else. Pray for one another. Now, this isn't the time to catch up on your quiet time for the, for the month. This is a time to, to pray specifically. Name this is the burden and then pray for one another about the burden, okay? Just a just a few sentences, not complicated, just whatever they share with you, you just share that together with the Lord, okay? Let's go. Amen. Amen, amen. This is one that uh, after we're done, you might want to follow up on some of these and uh, make, maybe make a commitment to someone or to one another. You're going to keep on praying about these things. Now, a third thing that happens in the Lord's Supper is, uh, I think, Jesus, as he shared the Lord's Supper with his followers, as he anticipated the cross, he told us to remember, and so we share memories as God's people. When we come together as the family of faith, we share things we remember. I think about those disciples. Goodness gracious, they had... They had been all over with Jesus. They had seen him heal the sick. Uh, they had seen him feed the hungry. They had seen him and listened to him as he taught the multitudes and as he cared about the one lost sheep. They had, they had observed so much from Jesus. And as they sit with him, it's hard to imagine that all of these things aren't bouncing through their minds of what they had seen and what Jesus had done and how Jesus had personally transformed their lives. When we get together for this Lord's Supper, we, we remember some things. And I hope that 
through the songs that we sing and the scriptures we share, the prayers we pray, we, we'd remember the stories and teachings of Jesus, his sinless life. We'd remember that he was arrested, having been betrayed, and went through trials before religious courts, civil courts. We remember his sacrificial death on the cross for our sins, not just for the sins of the world, for, for my sin he died on the cross. He paid for my sin, for your sin. We, we remember his body and his blood, the bread, the cup, his body, his blood given for us. We remember, we remember the victory of the risen Christ. He is not here, said the angel. He has risen. We serve a risen Savior, victorious over sin and death and hell. We remember, I always remember when I celebrate the Lord's Supper, I remember that night when I gave my life to Jesus, when I prayed and asked Jesus to take away, just a fret, knowing I was lost, separated from God by my sin. If I died, I was gonna spend eternity in hell because that's the consequence of separating from God. And I repented of my sin and put all my faith in Jesus and Jesus alone as my Savior. I remember when I was baptized the Lord's Supper is for those who've given their lives to Christ. We remember His working in our lives. I always, there's so many things that flash through my mind on the Lord's Supper day of all the things He has done in the course of the journey. Not just, what have you done for me lately? But, oh my goodness, there's so much history of what He has done in my life. I, I can't help but trust Him for tomorrow, even in the hard things. And even when I struggle with my doubts and my fears... I know he is with me. At our church, we celebrate the Lord's Supper often enough to keep it in front of us. And we, say, we share this in the uh, First Steps class with our folks considering membership. We do it often enough to keep it before us. Remember me. As often as you do this, remember me. We do it seldom enough so that it's really special when we do it. That it's going to be focused uh, on what Jesus has done. It's all about Jesus on these days. And Jesus told us to remember, and you know why he told us to remember? Remember is actually one of the most common words in all the Bible. Because God knows we have a tendency to forget. He knows our hearts. And he knows how easily distracted, how quickly we, we abandon him, how easy it is to fall away. Remember. Now, in a moment, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm not quite there yet, but we're going to pass out the, the bread, the cup, and we're going to, we do this in different ways. Sometimes, those of you who've been with us for a while, we have multiple tables because we want to respond to this. We want you to do something uh, tangible, physical, to, to make your way to a table. Um, but today, we're going to do it differently. We're going to do it slowly, deliberately. And in a moment, they're going to hand you the elements. And what, what I want you to do is to hold it. We'll, we'll have an instruction time where I tell you, okay, now we're going to take it together. Because together is what we're focusing on. But I want you to hold it. And I want you to think about it. As Jesus said, this is my body. This is my blood. And I want you to think about what that means for you. I, I, I want you to focus on the cross what Jesus did there to pay for our sins. This is a time to reflect on your relationship to Christ. And based on what Jesus has done for you, is your relationship to Christ reflecting all the things you would want it to reflect? And it's a time to remember. Now, we're going to do another together thing. And this one will take a little bit of time, a couple of minutes again, but... What is, your, what is your most, so we talk about spiritual markers, things that this so marked my life. And it may be, there are a lot of them, my, always my, my experience of salvation, uh, being saved from my sin. That certainly is a marker, but there are several markers 
through the course of my life. And so what I'd like for you to do is they shared memories. What's, what, is a, what is one of the outstanding spiritual experiences of your life that has marked your life every day since? And uh, why don't you share that with one another over the next couple of minutes, okay? That's good. All right. Thank you, thank you. And keep telling good stories. Always tell good stories, testimony stories. The fourth thing, we share the journey. The disciples had this special bond with one another because of Jesus. And, and Jesus had put so much into them, shared so much with them, and they had experienced so much together. And I think about that. One of, the, one of the things I enjoy most about a vacation trip is sharing it with other people, you know, with family and friends, to, to go somewhere with somebody else. I'd be a terrible solo act on a vacation. Uh, it, it's because the people you journey uh, alongside, the people journey alongside you, and it's the shared experiences and it's the stories that you have together that make it so special. It's not just, okay, I got from point A to point B, but it's what happened between point A and point B. Th those are precious, precious things in my life uh, of what... I have shared with the body of Christ uh, here. One of the blessings to me in this church family has been the journey. And there are, there are markers that we say, oh man, I, I still remember, some of you still remember the first day in this building after we had worked so hard and sacrificed greatly to make it possible. And that first Sunday in this space and how precious that was, and it was precious, but I'm telling you, the years that got to that day, I wouldn't trade those experiences either. Some late night meetings and just some praying that, God, we have no, we cannot make this happen. We're, we're beyond ourselves and we so desperately need you. And all those things, that shared journey is what makes it so special. The Lord's Supper is a shared experience as we journey through life, service, all this together. And then in the Lord's Supper, we share Jesus. Have you ever shared a meal with uh, someone that you, like, was a hero? Uh, maybe it was a celebrity, or it was someone you were going to be at a table with, and it's the, just somebody, uh, uh, somebody who's a big deal in your industry or in your particular business, and, you're just going to be on your best behavior, right? Uh, you're going to conduct yourself in the best possible way. You're going to choose your words so carefully. You're going to put forth just best, best effort in everything you do, everything you say. And I've had a couple of those experiences. Some, someone that I so admired and was so excited to get to meet and to sit down with and how I, I read everything they had written, everything to my knowledge, that they had ever written. And I had, I had a list of questions. I wanted to maximize every moment because I was going to be with this particular person for an hour on a, on a breakfast meeting. This morning, how about this? We sit down with Jesus and we observe the Lord's Supper. And that's something we, we don't take lightly either. The Lord's Supper is, a, is something we prepare for. We focus, we really hone in on this is important. Now, the Lord's Supper isn't for everyone, and there are a couple of general qualifications to be met. The first is that this is for believers in Jesus Christ. Those who said, I trust Jesus as my Savior, and He is my Lord, and I have surrendered my life to Him, repenting of my sin, putting all my faith in Jesus is the one and only way that I'm going to be saved. Now, when Jesus inaugurated the Lord's Supper, there were believers there. The, the next few verses in 22, Jesus notes that in the Passover part of this, Judas was still in the room. We learn from the other Gospels that Judas left before Jesus got to this part of the, this is my body, this is my blood part of this. Judas was probably, a, he's a religious guy. Uh, he'd been there every step of the way, doing things with them. He was probably baptized, but Judas was not a believer. It's also for believers. 
with clean hearts before God. Paul uses an adverb when he talks about this, uh, people taking the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner, unworthily. And uh, none of us are worthy of anything of God's grace. That's why it's grace. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it for sure. But he offers it to us freely, this gift of forgiveness and salvation and eternal life. He, he gives it to us freely. We're not worthy. But he says you can take the Lord's Supper in an unworthy way. So when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, in a real sense, while we do it together, I'm laid bare before the Lord on this too. And Paul wrote about spiritual preparation to the church at Corinth, and he said, So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself. In this way, let him eat the bread and drink from the cup. For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Okay, that makes this kind of a big deal, right? That it can be sin to take the Lord's Supper in an unworthy way. It, is, it, can, it brings judgment. He gives some details about that on down in 1 Corinthians. It brings, you bring the judgment of God on yourself for how you take the Lord's Supper. The Bible says to the, that the Corinthians were coming into this experience and it was like, oh yeah, time for that again. Oh yeah, done that before. Oh yeah, it's, it's uh, Lord's Supper time. Here we go. And it was thoughtless and careless. They took it lightly and they weren't prepared spiritually. And Paul says this brings the judgment of God. It's sin to take the Lord's Supper in such a way. And to do so, it's like you're, you're making a mockery of the Lord's Supper. And in the big picture of things, you remember when Jesus was being crucified, there were people standing around that were just mocking him, making fun of him. Oh, he saved others. Let him save himself. You take your place alongside that crowd of people when you don't prepare your heart for this sacred time together. Now... Paul calls for any believer prior to taking the Lord's Supper to examine themselves. And the only worthy manner is with a great deal of humility saying, I am a sinner saved by grace. And God, I, I know, sometimes we pray, uh, I, was, I was in the car going to this uh, pastor's retreat and I caught Tony Evans on the, I always enjoy Tony Evans on the radio he, he said, if you pray general prayers, you're going to get general answers. If you pray specific prayers, you're going to get specific answers. And I say it that way. Tony Evans said, if you're going to pray, you know. So I'm going to give you the Tony Evans version because it makes my throat hurt. But as he was talking, he, he, he mentioned this too, that uh, God forgive all my sins. Okay, squared away. I'm not... God revealed to me my hidden faults. God, show me the places where I really am. I'm not following you well. Uh, forgive me for the things I know are sin that I'm still carrying around with me. I know I ought to. I know I shouldn't. Those things, we all came in carrying something. Ask God specifically. Forgive you for those things. Make your heart clean before the Lord. Now, we're going to distribute these cups and it's a cup inside of a cup. I'm just going to warn you again about that. So we do the cup inside of a cup. It's possible they get stuck together a little bit. So it's not going to do any good to just, it's stuck. Just work it a little bit and it'll come loose. If you do this, it's not going to go well for your fellowship in the body of Christ today. So just it, work it apart. But it's a cup inside of a cup, the bread and the cup together, and the, and the, and the juice together. And it reminds us, these simple symbols that are just pretty plain, they remind us of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And I want you to, we, we're going to pass it out slowly and deliberately. And as you're waiting and as you're holding it, I want you to think about what it represents. And spend some time in confession of sin, focusing on Jesus who died on the cross to pay for your sin. Now, after we've all been served, 
just hold on to it. And after we've all been served, uh, then I'll come back and I'll share some scriptures and we'll take the bread and the cup and we'll do it together. So I'll give you those instructions when everyone's been served. Um, so if our gentlemen go ahead and uh, I'm going to pray before they start down so you can go ahead and go to your spots. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, because a number of people in our church as of uh, a gluten intolerance weren't able to take the Lord's Supper for several years we finally found a source for that if you need uh, that usually we have a table just set aside for you to come to uh, just as they're distributing things uh, one of them is going to be watching for you just raise your hand up high enough so they can see you and they'll bring that, uh, that tray to you okay let me pray for us and we'll begin uh, distributing Father, we thank you for Jesus who gave his life for us. Thank you for the victory of the cross and the victory of the resurrection. I pray, Father, that today our hearts will be clean before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, as we, as we do this, uh, if you're a guest today and you're a believer in Jesus Christ, uh, you are welcome to participate with us, and we're glad you're here. The Apostle Paul, we began that, I uh, read that from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians earlier. He said, as it was passed on to me, I'm passing it on to you. He, he says the, the same thing back in chapter 11, where he says, I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. That on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and when he'd given thanks he broke it and he said this is my body which is for you do this do this in remembrance of me He continues in the same way also he took the cup after the supper and said this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup he says something really encouraging you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes now I've been doing this for 15 years or so when we have these opportunities together. And I picked this up from the story of a small country church in Wisconsin. And they had this tradition. It's drawn from ancient Judaism and in ancient Judaism and to the day at the Passover observance, it's the desire of every faithful uh, follower of Judaism that sometime in the course of their life they really want to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. But not just the Passover, but the Passover in Jerusalem, how special that would be. So it's always their desire. So they conclude often with the toast next year in Jerusalem. Well, this little church took on a, a habit, a tradition. As we, we look at this, we remember the shed blood of Jesus for us. That's a part of it. But as we look at this, we're also reminded that Jesus who came is coming again. We remember the Lord's death until he comes. And so I recognize there's going to come a day when I celebrate the Lord's Supper for the last time, this side of heaven. And so today we're together and we celebrate this. But you raise that cup. Next time... Maybe next time with Jesus.